Did you guys see the news today? Nikon bought red. <laughs> Wasn't seeing that coming. Uh, that was not like on my bingo for 2024. Uh, the company that sued Nikon Red for basically infringing on their extreme patents on compressed raw is now being purchased by that very company. I'm in my backyard with my kid's iPad using a Sony Handycam right now. The president of Red, Jared Land, announced on Instagram this morning Ha ha ha, Nikon plus red. Very sarcastic, very fun. He knows how much fun he's having. Posted on Twitter, uh, having fun in Tokyo. This is great, this is big news. Nikon was a little late to the game in the mirrorless party, but the Z line actually turned out to be pretty solid. I switched to the Nikon Z6, the original, back when it first came out, and used that as my primary video camera on uh, Kinotika, the YouTube channel that I was running at the time. And it was fantastic, it had great color, better color than Sony in my opinion at the time. Great autofocus, the stabilization was wonderful, and I really enjoyed the ergonomics and the comfortability of that camera, it was fantastic. Fast forward to now, and we're seeing Nikon just really crushing it with cameras. The Z8 in particular has been a hot topic in a lot of people's mouths. Is that a thing that you say? Uh, <clears throat> it's a hot Nikon, a hot steamy pile of Nikon in your mouth. Um, and the Z8 shooting 8K and RAW and all these different things, it's just like, wow, the Nikon's actually just been crushing it. The Z9 in particular, a good friend of mine, Jordan Drake from Petapixel, uh, spoke very highly of his time using the Z9. I used it a little bit, never got to do a full review of it, but was a big fan of it as well. And I just think this is a crazy story because... Red is seemingly kind of behind in even the cinema world, even though they're still one of the top dogs. It seems like Ari and Sony have just been crushing it. Sony in particular, if we're going to be honest. I mean, I'm shooting on a Sony right now. Sony Handycam. <laughs> one thing that I find so interesting about this story is that Canon was in talks with doing this for years with Red. In fact, if you were to point to one company in particular who would buy Red, that's the one that you would think because modern RED cameras like the Komodo, the Komodo X have RF mounts built into it. That's a Canon proprietary mount. So that means they're working with Canon. There were rumors that the original Komodo sensor was a variation of a Canon-like sensor from like the R6, I believe. I don't know if that was true or not. There was talks about it back in the day when I worked at Indie Mogul and it seemed like that was the case when I did some head-to-head -head comparisons. Not to mention they use a proprietary Canon battery system. So I assume all that's going to be changing. And I think really ultimately what a loss for Canon, like what a wonderful opportunity this would have been for them to buy Nikon. They drop the ball as they often do. Oh crap. <clears throat> this is from Verge. Uh, Nikon hopes to use the deal to expand into professional digital cinema market, drawing from Red's knowledge in cinema cameras, including unique image compression technology and color science. R3D, uh, which Red has had a patent on for many years. They still have it. Um, they basically own a ton of patents on compressed video raw codec. This is why Red just has the best compression for raw files in the world. It's the most lightweight. It's the easiest to use. All the NLEs support it, Final Cut, Resolve, and Premiere. And it's a breeze to work with. I personally love the red color science and I find the R3D system to be the easiest and best way to operate with raw footage. So does that mean now that we're gonna be getting R3D in a Nikon mirrorless camera? I mean, it's been my dream personally to have some sort of mirrorless version of a red. And the just my, my mind is starting to explode just thinking about the possibilities. I mean, can you imagine like a retro NF or what's it called? Is it NF? The Nikon ZF, not NF, that's a wrapper. <laughs> like, can you guys imagine a Nikon ZF style camera that's retrofied, that is, you know, small and lightweight with IBIS, with great autofocus, with the great Nikon Z lenses, with R3D? And now they don't have to like hide around this and have some sort of special Nikon compressed RAW. Um, they can actually use real R3D. This is big. And a lot of people have been wondering like, how the heck did Nikon get away with all this? Like they got in big trouble for putting a compressed RAW codec in the Z9 camera, which was their flagship mirrorless camera. In fact, it was such a controversy that Red actually sued Nikon. 
And it turns out Nikon won that uh, lawsuit and they basically were able to keep the raw codec in the camera. They had to remove it for a period of time during the litigation of that. But I just wonder if like the interactions between Jared and the CEO of Nikon during this like lawsuit situation caused them to like become friends in a weird way or like what was once enemies have now become partners. And I love I love this story. It's like this is a big news story for the cinema world and for the tech space in general, I think. And I, I think it's going to be interesting to see how a company like Nikon, who has such a rich history in photography, I mean, it's like one of the best, if not, you know, most OG sauce companies uh, in the camera space can infuse all their know-how and like build uh, experience and like manufacturing experience and incredible Japanese engineering and applying that into uh, Red, you know, a Hollywood company that makes Hollywood movie cameras and does a great job of that as well. It's, it's just going to be really interesting to see what happens in the next couple of years because of this. And it's funny because you would think Red is like a big company, but I don't think they really have been much of a big company for a while. In fact, they lost a ton of money during the situation where they were trying to make their own phone. It was a big failure. The CEO, who actually used to own uh, the company, I guess he doesn't anymore, but um, he started Oakley. Uh, so he's kind of like, he was at the helm at the time, but now Jared's in, in charge, this guy Jared. And um, this is great. This is great news. I mean, my good friend Brandon Washington is stoked. He posted on Instagram about it, and uh, he's been shooting out in the Nikon for a while and says that the Nikon cameras are sleeper cameras, and I totally agree. I've, Like I said, I used the Z6 original and found it to be a wonderful camera and was singing its praises around other people, and they're like, Nikon, really? And here we are now. Nikon is crushing it uh, with the Z8, the Z9, uh, the ZF is wildly popular, and rightfully so they're doing all the right things it seems and uh which is funny because they were late to the game with the dslr uh revolution in terms of hdslr video on dslrs and i think they learned their lesson they're like you know what we are not going to make this mistake again canon won the hdslr race with the 5d mark ii and uh all the success that the cinema line had with canon and now nikon's making those moves because <laughs> i don't know if you knew this but nikon was actually the first company to have video in a DSLR, the Nikon D90, which came out before the 5D Mark II. But because the features were uh, quite lackluster, uh, it was like 720p only, I don't think they had any manual shooting. The 5D uh, Mark II came out and had some of those features. Slowly over time, they added more with firmware. And Canon ended up taking over that entire space and, and really revolutionizing the entire film industry as a whole because of it. And they're like, you know what? Let's not do that again. <laughs> Red might be struggling. Ari's crushing it. Sony's crushing it. Uh, the Alexa is still kind of like the main cinema camera in Hollywood. Uh, now with Sony and the Venice line and the FX3 just taking over Hollywood and low budget filmmaking. So Red needs help. They need help to kind of get this thing back going again. They still have a huge reputation and people like MKBHD and other uh, creators talk about it and love it. I personally love the color science of red. I love the R3D codec in particular. This is huge. And what this makes me wonder too is, is Canon in trouble? Because as far as I'm aware, Canon actually is licensing uh, the raw compressed codec that they have in their cameras from red. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure because of red's patents, they're able to kind of control any like compressed raw codec that a company uses. I don't know if Ari is getting around that with theirs um, or if it's just simply uncompressed and that's how they get around it. Again, I'm getting into the weeds of some really technical jargon here, but I think it's fascinating and it would be interesting to see now if, uh, you know, Nikon's biggest competitor, Canon, if they like, are, if Canon's licensing R3D from them, like they're going to be like, eh, not anymore. Or what if Nikon just opens it up and they say, hey, Sony, hey, Canon, you guys want to pay us a royalty? We'll give you R3D. You got to pay us a royalty for every camera sale. Or, you know, maybe a user enables it by paying a fee, paying like a $200 fee or probably end up being more than that, honestly. But like, that's really fascinating. Can you imagine shooting on a Canon, on a Sony, like a Sony mirrorless with R3D built in? I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, it'd be sick to have that, especially on like an Atomos. I could see that happening. 
doing a partnership with Atomos, a ninja with R3D built in finally instead of Black Magic. And then where's where's this leave Black Magic? Yeah, exactly. Like Black Magic is now probably uh, crapping in their pants a little bit because they've kind of taken over the low budget raw recording world with their amazing affordable cameras and the Black Magic raw codec, which is fantastic as well. Again, I want to just reiterate how important, how amazing R3D is compared to anything else. ProRes RAW, Blackmagic RAW, even Canon RAW, they all have limitations and none of them are as flexible and easy to use as R3D. And it's because of these patents and the technology that RED has put behind it. They were the first to the game. They did this like years ago with the original RED and they just have it on lockdown. And like, it kind of sucks because all the other, you know, camera companies can't take advantage of that. Um... But this is huge. If R3D gets open, open source, and people can license it, not open source, but if people can pay to, you know, Nikon to have it on their cameras, which I think would be probably a smart business move for Nikon. Although if they just kept it all for themselves, then that would incentivize people to switch to Nikon. I don't know. I, I feel like they're going to keep it for themselves. Like imagine a Ni- an A7S type camera, FX3 type camera from Nikon with R3D built in, with IBIS, with the, you know, great autofocus that they have. I don't know. Some of the things I do love about Nikon is their glass too. They have great glass, way better than Canon's RF line, in my opinion. They have more variety, more options, smaller, more compact uh, options, and they balance better. I don't know. It's just something about it. I remember talking to an engineer at Nikon at one of the trade shows I went to, and he said how much time and effort they put into putting the weight of the lens towards the back of the lens. That way, when you're holding it, it doesn't feel front heavy. It actually, the the weight of the camera kind of is being pulled back onto the camera. I don't know. I just, I love that. That's great engineering. They've always had great ergonomics as well. When you hold a Nikon camera in your hand, like a proper uh, professional Nikon, it just feels better. They have way better ergonomics in my opinion. So this is going to make Canon scared. This is going to make Blackmagic scared. Um, I don't know about Sony. Sony and Nikon have their own partnership, so this may end up benefiting Sony in a way. Um, they, but they, they might be afraid as well. It's just interesting that like Sony didn't buy them. Sony has the money. Why, why didn't they buy them? Why didn't Canon buy them? It's got an RF mount on the red Komodo. They're using like all the Canon batteries. What's wrong, Canon? What's wrong with you? Ah! Canon never fails to uh, let me down. (laughs) Anyways, I mean, I've got a C70. Uh, I still have it, and I do love that camera, but Canon does uh, just seem to make a lot of poor decisions with their business practices. So anyways, curious to hear your thoughts. Nikon bought red. Interesting times, indeed.